Hey guys, Brandon Addison here with Low T Nation coming at you guys again. We have gotten a lot of good feedback on some of these videos that we started doing here in the kitchen, so I thought I would go ahead and develop a little bit of a series of educational videos for you guys around testosterone replacement. And to start that off, we're just going to start at the absolute fundamental basics and um, just the, the, the very basics, okay, of the male physiology. There's something called the HPTA. It's the hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis. If it's not something that you know about and you are currently on testosterone, please, by all means, um, do a little bit of research. Not only watch this video, but do a little bit more research um, after this video is over. We're going to have a lot more follow-on videos to add to this as well. So let's just go ahead and jump into this. The, the primary function of the body as far as all the reproductive hormones and management goes is this hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis. And it's the way the hypothalamus looks and sees what levels you're at as far as testosterone and estrogen. It communicates those levels when it needs more to the pituitary who in turn drops some uh, hormones off that are picked up by the testicles that then in turn create the actual testosterone. Okay. So the first thing, the hypothalamus is basically the fuel meter or the thermostat, if you will, in this whole deal. The, when the thermostat in your house um, basically determines that, hey, the temperature is, is low enough to kick on the heater, it does so. It sends electricity to the heater and then the heater heats up your house. The hypothalamus is basically the same thing. It's just the thermostat. And whenever it gets low, the body sends something to the pituitary called gonadotropin releasing hormone. All right, gonadotropin releasing hormone then gets dropped into the system to the pituitary. The pituitary then in turn releases what it calls the gonadotropics, what we call it, the gonadotropic hormones or the gonadotropics. If you ever hear somebody saying the gonadotropics on a certain patient or low, that means LH and FSH, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone are low. All right, and that means that the pituitary is not releasing, for whatever reason, these gonadotropics. LH and FSH. Testicular function is predicated on these two being present, okay? LH, luteinizing hormone, is the flagging or the signaling hormone for the Leydig cells in the testicles to produce testosterone. Follicle stimulating hormone is the actuator for the Sertoli cells in the testicles to produce sperm. All right. So if a guy has low gonadotropin releasing hormone for whatever reason, he's going to have low pituitary function in the gonadotropic area. LH and FSH are going to be low. Therefore, testicular function for both testosterone and sperm are going to be low. Okay, when they're high, the testicles produce a healthy amount of testosterone if they can. And then in turn, the body naturally aromatizes some of this testosterone into something called estradiol. It's the primary estrogen, especially in a man. And that is what the hypothalamus is looking for. Okay, so you can see there's multiple points of failure here. Um, low T, which is hypogonadism, comes in two forms. One is primary hypogonadism, which means the testicular function to produce the actual testosterone is not optimal. It may not even be present at all, depending on how severe it is. Okay, primary hypogonadism exists right here, just testicular function. Secondary hypogonadism exists everywhere else. I mean, something in that, that cascading or signaling chain of hormones is not working the right way. And there's a lot of things that can cause it. Um, Anti-anxiety meds, anti-depression meds are big um, causes for this. Drinking too much alcohol, certain drugs are also big indicators, or not big indicators, but big causes for the, the secondary hypogonadism. And this is why every doctor should be looking at not only free and total testosterone when he's running initial blood work on a patient, but also what his LH and FSH are. Because if a patient's LH and FSH are high and testosterone is low, guess what? That means the problem most likely relies over here because you're sending those signaling hormones to the testicles. If LH and FSH are low 
and testosterone is low, then most likely, you can't say most likely, but there's a good chance that the problem just exists here. And if you beef up these pituitary hormones, then the testosterone is going to respond in a, in a corresponding fashion. So these are the very, very basics, guys. Now, some of the things that you need to be aware of, when you get on a testosterone replacement hormone, we're going to jump in front of the testicles, right, with, I'm going to call this ET for exogenous testosterone. We jumped in front of testicular production by introducing an externally sourced um, testosterone, exogenous testosterone. A certain percentage of that is going to be converted into estradiol. The hypothalamus is going to say, hey, we are good to go. The room is warm. I don't need to, you know, hit, I don't need to send any current to the, uh, the heater through the thermostat. And this is going to get shut down. Okay. None of this. None of this. None of this. Guess what? None of this. This is why, guys, when you get on testosterone replacement for a long time and you're not using HCG, which actually mimics luteinizing hormone, you're, you have testicular shrinkage and atrophy. That's exactly why. We shut down. This thing is called a negative feedback loop. We shut the negative feedback loop down because the hypothalamus is seeing plenty of estrogen because we're introducing testosterone, which is turning into estrogen, into the body from an external source. There's no need to create those signaling hormones to go out and tell the testicles to produce testosterone. So what a good clinic should be doing, in my opinion, okay, is introducing not only testosterone, but HCG as well. HCG mimics luteinizing hormone. So now we turn this, this X over here into a check mark check mark and we are producing testosterone again and, and it will optimize it'll produce every bit of the testosterone that you can actually produce to whatever limit that is and if you still need more obviously that's where the exogenous comes in all right what does this mean lh makes testosterone what does fsh make again it makes sperm so in this situation guys we're going to not have a good healthy sperm count. Now we're gonna have nice healthy testicles. The testicular function is going to be kept intact by the HCG. The entire um, tissue set in the testicles is gonna be kept healthy. However, that Sertoli cell is not going to be engaged by the follicle stimulating hormone to actually create that sperm. That spermatogenesis function is not going to be, um, is not going to be called on Therefore, sperm counts be, will be reduced greatly, all right? But that's not the end of the story because we can also do something. If, if family planning is important for a man, we can introduce something called Clomid. And remember, the hypothalamus is looking for estrogen. There's receptors up here that are basically, as long as there's, there's healthy levels of estrogen in the body, they're turned on, right? They're check marks basically saying, hey, I see plenty of estrogen. I know there's testosterone because that's where the estrogen comes from. So I'm not going to you know, fire up the whole cycle. Well, what Clomid does, it shuts those receptors off. It's actually called a, it's called a selective estrogen receptor modulator. It's a CERM. And um, when it shuts these off, all of a sudden, what happens? This is no longer an X, right? big check marks because these things are turned completely off. Basically the body's saying, I have no estrogen, which means I have no testosterone. Let's fire this thing up and get it going as much as possible. So that's going to in turn go to the pituitary. The pituitary is going to fire off LH and FSH to whatever levels it can. The testicles are going to pick those up and run with it. Okay. So that's why you want Clomid if you are trying to family plan. The problem with Clomid, though, is it raises something called sex hormone binding globulin, which will drastically decrease your free testosterone. We're going to get into that later. This is why we only use Clomid only for men who are family planning, and we only do it short term during that cycle that they're actually trying to conceive. And outside of that, we take them off the Clomid. We try to rectify their sex hormone binding globulin levels, which will in turn increase that free testosterone level significantly. All right. So again, guys, I don't want to go any further than this today on this one video. This is just the basics of the HPTA. If you guys have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the description. Uh, hit us on the website if you want to contact us directly. The website's lowtnation.com. 
Again, my name is Brandon. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.